So welcome to Blend. My name is Rachel, and today we'll just do a well-balanced class. Uh, I recommend having two blocks. You can also use boxes or cans or anything solid to put your hands on. Um, a blanket is always a good prop to have around, which can be just a towel from your bathroom. The other option is a strap. A strap can be a belt, literally from your closet or it can be a longer towel just to wrap around to extend the length of the arm. So um, this is such an interesting experience to record these classes and teach. And I know you're there because <laughs> you're watching it, but also in an interesting way to do this on my own. And uh, I don't think we've ever had a time like this where we um, have a way to be alone but still feel connected. And so this practice is allowing me to not only feel connected back to the community here, but also feel connected um, back to my body, which I would say for the last 10 days, I felt a little bit disjointed. So as much as this practice is an offering for you, it is um, an, an offering up for myself. So. Um, I view that as you take this class, that it is a way for you not only to connect with the community out here, but also reconnect with yourself. So bring your palms together. Take your shoulders right over your hips. So when you bring your palms together, you can bring them right together to the center of your chest. If that's a position you don't enjoy, option to bring your palms to your heart. You can breathe deeply, eyes open or eyes closed. Begin to deepen your breath and connect with it. Connecting with it means to acknowledge all four parts of your breath. The inhale, the small pause between the inhale and the exhale, the exhale, the small pause between the exhale and the inhale. Four parts of your breath. Then bring your entire torso a part of it. So not just feel your chest rise, but feel your ribs expand in all four directions and feel your belly move out as you inhale. Feel the entire torso engage with the breath. Blink your eyes open, release your hands, and we'll start in child's pose. Take your knees wide, big toes together. If your forehead can't reach down to your mat, option to bring a block underneath your head. If your forehead reaches down, option to bring the tip of the nose down. Walk the hands out so you lengthen in the torso. Reach the hips towards the heels. Then slide the hands underneath the shoulders, press the torso up. Come up onto your hands and knees, hands right underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, knees hip width apart. Press your hands down. Starting with cat pose, from the tip of the tailbone, slowly ripple up the spine, one vertebra at a time. Bring your chin into your chest. Hold through a few inhales and exhales. Press from the shoulders down into the hands. Keep drawing the tailbone down, belly button in towards spine, ribs in towards spine. Press the tops of the feet down, clicking all 10 of your toenails down into your mat. Then reverse it, tip of tailbone slowly moves up. Ripple up the spine one vertebra at a time. Lifting the chin slightly. Draw the shoulders forward towards the front of your mat and then melt between the shoulder blades. Keep lifting the tailbone, keep the belly engaged. And with each exhale, see if you can melt a little bit more. 
Now move at your own pace, tailbone down, ripple up the spine back to cat pose. And then keep moving through cat, cow. Think of this as more of a moving meditation. A way to wake up the spine and notice how it feels. Notice any parts of the spine that feels more sticky or perhaps more open. Keep pressing the hands down. Two more rounds. After your next cow pose, come to flat back. Twisted child's pose. Take your right arm up and off to the side. And then you'll spread it underneath you, working your outer shoulder, outer ear to the floor. Keep your left hand where it is and press it down and away from you to help stack the shoulders. Twist. Breathe as deeply as you can. Then inhale, unwind, reach the arm back out. And exhale, place the hand down. Switch sides, take the left arm up and off to the side, thread it underneath you, working the outer shoulder, outer ear to the floor. Keep your right hand where it is, press it down and away from you to help stack the shoulders. Breathe as deeply as you can. Then inhale, unwind. Come on back up onto your hands and knees. Walk the legs back for plank pose, top of a push-up. Take your hands outer shoulder distance apart. So that means that the outer shoulder lines up with the middle of the wrist. Legs straight and strong. Press from the shoulders into the hands. Grip the floor with your fingertips. You can do knees up or knees down. So Feels like it's getting too much here, collapsing. Just bring the knees down, knees are behind the hips. Then exhale, lower down to your belly. Come up onto your forearms for sphinx pose. Elbows right underneath shoulders, so you're making a right angle. Lift your chest forward and up, put all 10 toenails down into your mat. Draw your chest forward and up. Bring the chin slightly back. Then look down, interlace the hands, and bring the palms together. If the bottom pinky is smushed or feels uncomfortable, tuck it in. Press the forearms down, go back to your sphinx pose. Then from here, bring the chin back down, tuck the toes under, and push up to forearm plank. Hold. Then you're going to lower the hips back down. Come back to sphinx. Tuck the toes under. Push up, forearm plank. Lower down. Tops of feet down. Lift the chest up one last time. Tuck the toes under. Lift the hips up. Lower them back down. Release the hands. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Press up to plank. Bend the knees. And instead of thinking bringing the chest back, I want you to push the inner thighs back, legs back, and let the upper body follow. The lead, legs are leading to push us back to down dog. Don't worry about the heels getting down or the legs straightening. Give yourself some time to open the backs of the legs. Take the triceps, rotate them in towards the ears and press on the shoulders into the hands. If you like to pedal at the feet, lift one heel up, bring the other heel down and move side to side. Or just hold your down dog.
Come back to down dog, both heels reaching down and back. Bend the knees, walk the feet forward, all the way towards the front of your mat. Either feet together or feet hip width. Inhale, flat back, start with the hands and the shins, draw the chest forward, reach the hips back. Then exhale, fold, slide the hands down, either hands to floor or hands to blocks. Bring your face towards your shins. Inhale, flat back, fingertips to floor or hands back to shins. And then exhale, fold. Two more rounds. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Keep pushing the inner heels down, inner thighs back. Then inhale, come back to flat back. Press your heels down, inner thighs back, bring your arms in line with your ears, and then inhale, rise up, flat back. Arms down by your side. Stay the position facing forward. I'm gonna turn to the side so it's more visible. Keep your right arm down, lift your left arm up, lengthen, and crescent over to the right. Feet together, take your top shoulder back, reach your right hand down your thigh. Straighten your left arm. Keep your legs strong, pressing your feet down as you crescent up and over. Inhale up, switch sides. Take your left hand, arm down by your side, right arm up, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crescent over to the left. Keep your right arm straight and strong. Press your feet down. Notice if the weight is all in the balls of your feet, lean slightly back to get it balanced over your sole of your foot. Reach your left hand down towards your knees as you crescent up and over. One last breath. Inhale, rise up. Take your arms down, Tadasana. Reach your arms down and in, lift your chest up. Before we go further, a review of the four corners of the feet. Big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. And as you engage each of these individually, think of them as you're trying to knit them together. So the big toe mound knits towards the little toe mound, which knits towards the inner heel, which knits towards the outer heel. Come back to Tadasana. Press your big toe mound down. Push your pinky toe down. Now knit the pinky toe towards the inner heel, and then from the inner heel, knit towards the outer heel. Stretch your arms down and in. Inhale, reach your arms up, bring them overhead, legs strong. Inhale, lengthen, keep the four corners, and crescent over to the right. You can either keep the arms overhead or repeat the other variation we just did, whichever works best for you. But work on the four corners of the feet. Big toe mound, Little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Crescent up and over. Then inhale, rise up. Your thumbs are clasped, switch the clasp. Inhale, lengthen. Get your four corners, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel, crescent up and over. Squeeze the biceps in towards your ears if both arms are beside your head. Keep the four corners working. And then inhale, rise up. Exhale, bring your arms down. Come back to Tadasana. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back into lunge. Stay here with the hands down, draw the chest forward, press the inner thighs back. Keep the left hand down, reach the right arm up, revolve, lunge. Stack the shoulders. Bring the front knee over the ankle, back leg straight, and stretch the arms away from each other. Squeeze your outer right hip towards your inner left thigh. Tone the belly and try and turn the belly a little bit more to the right. Then exhale, bring your hand down. Step your back foot forward to flat back. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step your right foot back into lunge. Back 
leg straight, front knee over ankle. Press your inner thighs back, chest forward. So trying to take the round out of the back, and lengthen in the spine. Keep the back leg strong. Squeeze your outer left hip towards your inner right thigh. Keep your right hand down, lift your left arm up, revolve lunge. Stretch the arms away from each other. Press the feet down and squeeze them towards each other. Tone the belly, turn a little bit more to the left. You can look up at your top hand, out to the side, or down at your front foot. Stretch the arms from the shoulders into the out of the hands, away from each other. Last breath. Then exhale, bring your hands down. Step back to plank. From here, knees up or knees down, hold. From here, knees up or knees down, out of push up. Press back, downward facing dog. So versions, inhale to plank, knees up or knees down and hold. Knees up or knees down, maybe out of push up. And then push back, downward facing dog. One more, just like that. Inhale to plank. Core remains strong. Add a push up or hold plank. Exhale back, down dog. Inhale, come back forward. Exhale, lower down. Click the tops of your feet down into your mat. Bring your hands just outside your ribs. Take the shoulders up, pull them back, lift your chest. Cobra. Lift the hands up off the mat, hug the elbows in, lift a little bit more. Feel the upper back and the entire back engage. Keep that engaged as you push up to cobra pose. Pull the hands down and back, lift the chest forward and up. Exhale, lower down. Bring the feet together. Stretch the legs back one at a time. Lift the hands up off the mat, lift the legs up, lift the chest up. Hug the elbows in. Cobra, hands and thighs off floor. Stay here or bring the hand down, but be careful if you push down, the thighs come down. You wanna lift the chest using some of the strength of the arms, but keep the legs lifting. Hold for three, two, and one, lower down. Scooch back a little bit on your mat so you can bring your arms out in front of you. Rest your forehead down on your arms. Take a few deep breaths. Lift your head up. We're gonna do a little combination move, keeping the hands where they are so the hands are stacked over the elbows. You'll lift up, cobra pose. This one is the forearm stay stacked, chest lifts up. Then you come down a little bit, tuck the toes under, push the arms down, lift up. Exhale down, lift the chest, version of Sphinx. Bring the head back down, tuck the toes under, lift the hips. Lower them back down, lift the chest. One more round, tuck the toes under, lift the hips up. Lower back down, lift the chest. Release the arms and just gently roll on over onto your back. Knees bent, feet flat on floor. Take your right leg up and over, single wrap or double wrap for eagle legs. Then our aim is to keep this low back pushing on the floor, so push it down, so much so that the sit bones lift. Keep it down. Option to bring the arms into eagle or just give yourself a bear hug. Keep the low back pressing down and maybe you move the legs further away from your torso. If you move the legs away and the low back lifts, that's a cue you've moved past your point. So bring them back in, get the low back down and find that place where you can keep pushing the low back down and maybe straighten the legs a little bit more. Relax the jaw, relax the neck. 
If you're shaking, that's a good sign. And then release. Bring both feet back down to your mat. Other side, take your left leg over your right. Push the low back down so nothing can slide underneath there. Push it down a lot. Then the left arm comes underneath the right or wrap the arms around. Keep pushing the low back down and maybe move the legs a little bit further away from you. There's a lot of work happening here, keeping the low back down. And if it lifts up, you gotta bring the knees back in to get it glued back down. Breathe. Squeeze the legs together, squeeze the arms together. And then release, unwind, stretch the arms and the legs away from each other. You're gonna roll right back up onto your belly. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, push up and back, downward facing down. Bend the knees, look forward, step or hop forward to flat back. Exhale, fold. Then inhale, rise up, stretch up. Exhale, hands beside you. We're gonna move into tree pose. Take your left foot into tree. Stay facing the other way. Don't turn and face the same direction I am. And you'll bring your palms together. Either they stay at the chest. If you're un feeling unbalanced or wobbly, you can use a wall or palms overhead. So push from your right hip down into your right foot. Keep your hips squared forward and try and draw your front knee out, reaching your left inner thigh to your left inner knee. Stay here in tree. We're gonna work on a transition from here. If your palms are overhead, bring them back to your chest. You'll unhook the leg and take a deep step back to lunge. Back heel down. Warrior two. Stretch your arms up, lift your chest up. Push your front foot down and draw your front knee out. Now see if you can find the four corners. Big toe mound, inner heel, little toe mound, outer heel in your front leg. Let's see if you can apply that to your back leg. Big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Keep stretching the arms out, lifting the chest up. Windmill the hands down. Step your back foot forward to flat back. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Then inhale, rise up, stretch up. Exhale, palms to center. Stay where you are on your mat. Take your right foot into tree. Place your palms to the center of your chest or bring them up over your head. From your left hip, push down into your left foot. So now letting the hip kick out and be passive here. You want the standing leg strong to your tree trunk. Then from your inner right groin, reach to your inner right knee keeping the hips pointing forward. Stay in your tree. Try and gaze at something that's not moving. Then bring the palms to the center of your chest. Unhook your leg, lean forward, step the leg back for warrior two. Try and get the front knee over the ankle, front thigh parallel to the floor, front foot. Now your left foot, big toe mound, inner heel, little toe mound, outer heel. Keep that working in that leg. Go to the back foot, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Stretch the arms out, lift the chest up. 
Relax the shoulders from the ears. And one the hands down. Step your back foot forward to flat back. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, palms to center. Step your feet together. Bring your arms down by your sides. Uttanasana, power pose. Bend the knees, brush the fingertips down, lift the arms up, chest up. Hold for three, two, one, rise up. Exhale, bend the knees, brush the fingertips down, lift the chest up, Utkatasana. We'll do four more rounds just like this. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold, brush the fingertips down, lift the chest up. See if you can sink a little bit deeper, weight into the heels, inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold. Two more. Brush the fingertips down. Rise up. Arms down by side. Forward fold. Utkatasana. Last time. Squeeze the knees together. Sit back. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, arms down. Tadasana. Find your four corners. Big toe mound. Little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Lift the chest up. And inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back into lunge. Inhale, rise up. Reach your arms over your head. Try and bring the back heel right over the ball of the foot. Front knee right over the ankle. Thigh working parallel to the floor. Inner thighs move back. Core strong, ribs moving in, chest lifting up. Lunge pose. Hands shoulder width. Then straighten the front leg. Don't worry about the back heel coming down. Squeeze the legs in. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, come to flat back. Bend the front knee as much as you need to to get the hands down. Draw the chest forward, so think flat back here. Now once you have your flat back, then maybe lower the back heel down just a little bit. The goal is not to get it down, but to feel a stretch here. Press the front foot down and forward. Then come up high onto your back foot, step it in a few inches, and now bring the back heel down. Option to use blocks or bend the front knee slightly. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. And inhale, lengthen the spine. Walk the hands forward. Step the back foot forward, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step your right foot back into lunge. Back heel right above the ball of the foot, draw your chest forward. Inhale, rise up, reach the arms up. More doable option is hands to hips. You can bend the back knee. If you're working on working the back leg towards straight, make sure the heel is right above the ball of the foot, front knee over ankle. Then get the core strong, so ribs move in, belly button moves in towards spine, and then the arms reach over the head. Ideally, it's shoulder, wrist in one line, to hips in one line. Squeeze your outer left hip towards your inner right. Then straighten your front leg. Bring your hands down towards the mat. Hands to block or to floor. 
Inhale, lengthen the spine. Keep the flat back, drawing your chest forward. Stay here or maybe reach the back heel down a little bit more. Keep the spine lengthening. Gaze just past the front foot. Press your left foot, your front foot down and forward. Then bend the back legs, hop it forward a few inches, bring the back heel down. Inhale, flat back, you can stay here in pyramid, or exhale, fold in. Inhale, flat back. Step your back foot forward. Forward fold. And inhale, rise up. Bring your palms together to the center of your chest. Turn yourself so you're facing the long edge of your mat now and take a wide stance. Wide stance equals ankles and wrists right in one line. So for most of us, that means it's a little bit wider than what we think. Then you're gonna take your right foot, draw the heel in and turn the toes out. Try not to shorten your stance when you do that. Push the right foot down and away from you. Find your four corners of your front foot and then reach your right arm forward, 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 and either bring your hand to your shin, a block or outside your leg. Stretch your top arm up. Stretch both arms away from each other. Press the inner edge of your front foot down, outer edge of back foot. Try and lengthen the right side of your torso. Then inhale, rise up. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. Find the four corners of your front foot, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Keep that working and reach your left arm forward. Keep lengthening the left side of your torso, reach, and then bring the hand down to the block, your shin or the mat, stretch your top arm up. Stretch the arms away from each other. Try and lengthen the left side of your torso. Then inhale, rise up. Turn your toes together. Bring your fingertips together. Bend your knees, step or hop. Parasana. Step back to the front of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back into lunge. Heel toe your right foot out three to four inches and bring your knee down. Option to use blocks underneath your forearms for forearm lunge or you can walk the hands forward or rest the forearms down. If you're leaning to one side only on the left elbow, that's a cue that this is a little bit too deep. So raise yourself up. Draw your chest forward, reach your hips back. Think lengthen in the torso. Come back up. Place your hands down on the inside of your front foot. Lift your back knee up. 
lean forward. Press all the weight into your hands. Lift your front foot up and draw your heel in towards your hip. Hold for three, two, one. Step back, downward facing dog. Take your left leg up. Step your left foot between your hands. Bring the hand on the inside and heel toe the foot out three to four inches. Bring your back knee down. Repeat the same setup you had on the first side. Blocks or walking the hands out or forearms onto the mat. Draw your chest forward, reach your hips back. Remember hips take a long time to open. So the longer we stay here, the more opportunity we have to release some of that. Keep reaching your chest forward, hips back. Trying to take as much round out of the upper back. Come back up onto your hands. Hands onto the inside of the foot. Tuck the back toes under. Lean forward so the shoulders are now in front of the wrists. Lift the left foot up. Squeeze the heel in towards the hips. Lean forward. Hold for three. Two. One. Stretch the leg back. Downward facing up. Come forward to plank. Roll onto your right hand, outer edge of right foot for side plank and the kickstand variation. So bring your top foot, your right foot, or sorry, your left foot in front of your hip. Lift your hips, stretch your arms away from each other. Even if you can do ankle stack, do this variation because you're gonna use it as a transition to another. Then you'll lower the hip down, reach the left arm out to the side. Lift the chest. Then inhale, we'll come right back up. Stretch the arms away from each other. Lift the hips. Press the outer edge of the back foot down. We'll lower the hips down again. Reach the arm towards the straight leg. Lift the chest. Draw the shoulders back. Inhale, lift up. Last one, exhale, come down. Reach the hand towards the, back, the straight leg, lift the chest, and then lift up, and bring the hand down, step back to plank. Working the left side, roll onto the left hand, outer edge of left foot for side plank. Kickstand the foot in front of you, heel is almost in line with the hip, lift the hips up, stretch the arms away from each other. Keep lifting, lengthening, push the Index knuckle down onto your mat. Then lower the hip down, reaching the right arm towards the straight leg. Notice how the shoulder wants to pop forward, bring it back. Then lift the hips up. Lower back down. Shoulder blades together, lift the chest. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale down. And inhale back up. Hand comes down. Now we're facing up. Bend the knees, walk them in halfway onto your mat. Come into a squat. So a squat can be feet together, heels down, or it can be feet wide, toes pointing out. If the heels don't come down, another variation is to add padding underneath your heels, such as rolled up blanket or a towel. Let the knees splay open and walk the hands forward for Malasana Garland Prep. Hold in, 
Try and bring the ribs more between the inner thighs. Slide the arms back against the legs. Come up high into your tippy toes. Bring the arms against the legs so they can push into each other. Look forward, lift one foot, maybe another foot. You can keep the elbows bent or work them more towards straight. Hold here for three, two, and one. Lower the feet down. Walk the hands slightly forward, push back, downward facing dog. Take your right leg up. Bring your right knee to your outer right wrist, right heel to left hip. Bring the back knee down and roll onto your right hip. Take the right hand outside the front knee. Don't worry about the back leg right now. Do what it's gonna do. Draw both shoulder blades together, lift the chest. Option one might be here for you. Option two, bend the back leg, reach around and grab the foot with the hand, drawing the heel towards the outer hip. You can spin the right hand around for back cross my grip. If you want to deepen the stretch in this quad or hip flexor, you take the knee, lift it up, and slide it back a little bit more. Lift the chest. Use the strength of the left leg to clamp the heel into the hip, not just the hand doing the work. And then release the back leg. Place the hands down. Press back, downward facing dog. Other side, take your left leg up. Bring your left knee to your outer left wrist. Left heel to right hip. Lower the left hip down. Take the left hand wide off the mat. Bend the back leg, reach around and grab the top of the foot with the hand. Or repeat the same variation you did on the first side. Square the chest forward. Stay here. If you want to deepen the stretch, you lean back a little bit, lift the knee up, slide it back, and then bring it back down to your mat. Draw both shoulder blades together, lift the chest. Bring the hands down, press back to downward facing dog. Take your right leg up. Step your right foot between your hands. Bring your back knee down, but don't bring it forward when you come down. Keep it nice and wide along Anjane Asana. Back foot down, toenails down. Bring your hands to your front knee, lift your chest up. So option one, work here, press my hands down and forward. Option two, reach the arms over the head. Press the right foot down, right heel draws towards left knee. Then inhale, straighten the front leg. Flex the front foot and bring the hands down for bowing, sage, or Hanumanasana prep. Keep the front foot flex, pressing the right heel down and dra drawing it back towards the opposite knee. Option to walk the hands forward to extend. And bring the foot back down. Hands back up to the front knee, lift the chest. Either stay here, reach the arms up one last time. And exhale this time, bring the hands down. Keep the hands framed by the front foot, flex the front foot and fold right in. Plant 
plant the front foot down. Lift the back knee up, push back, downward facing dog. Other side, take your left leg up, step your left foot between your hands. Bring your back knee down. Remember, not shortening it, but lengthening it. That will make sure you're in better alignment for bowing stage. Bring the hands up to the front knee. Shoulders over hips. Stay here or reach the arms up. Press the left foot down, left heel draws towards the right knee. Inner thighs move back, core is engaged, chest lifting up. And inhale, straighten the front leg, flex the front foot, bring the hands down. Draw the chest forward, fold in. You can keep the hands where they are or walk them forward. Keep pressing the left heel down, left heel draws towards right knee. And bend in the front knee. Come back up onto your front leg. Knee bent on Janae Asana, either hands to knee or arms overhead. Square the chest, reach the arms up and back. And this time we'll frame the front foot with the hands. Flex the front foot, fold in. Keep the left foot flexed. Keep the lengthening in the upper body. Core is engaged. Then bring the front foot back down to your mat. Tuck the back toes under. Step the back foot forward. Forward fold. And bend the knees a lot. Bring the arms parallel and lower the hips down to your mat. Bring the legs out in front of you. Take tree pose with your right leg. Scoot the flesh out from underneath you or an option to sit up on a blanket. Bring the torso over the left leg, Johnny Shearsasana. Now this is where a strap could come in handy if you can't quite reach the foot. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, either grab onto the foot, the leg, or use a strap and fold in. If you're able to reach your foot and you have a block nearby, option to grab onto a block and use it as an extension. Lift your left ribs up, keep the belly toned. And then inhale, rise up. Our Rita Janakshirsasana. So variations of this one, we'll start with stage one and move from there. The left hand comes on the inside of the left leg. The right hand comes to the back of the head, elbow pointing up, twist and twist to the right and reach the left elbow up and over. That's option one. Option two, bring the left forearm down onto the floor. Reach the right first two fingers and thumbs around your big toe. Option one, stay here, push, pull. Option two, duck the head underneath the arm and stack the shoulders. Push the left forearm into the left leg and then press the right hip down towards the floor. Flex the left foot. Inhale, come on up. We'll switch directions or switch legs. Take tree pose. Take your torso over your right leg. Bring your hands to either side of the leg. Either use a strap, your hands, or grab anywhere on your leg. Square the torso and fold in. If you used a block the last time, you can bring it in again as a prop, wrapping it with your hands around your foot. Press the back of your right leg down. 
Lift your right ribs up. And then inhale, rise up. Janu Shirsasana in stages. First stage, hand down, arm on the inside of the leg. Bring the left hand to the back of the head, point the elbow up, and crescent. Stay here and work here. Or bring the forearm down. Grab onto the inner edge of the foot. Reach the left hand around, grab onto the big toe with her first two fingers and thumb. Stay here, or deck the head under and stack the shoulders. Press the back of the right leg down, reach the left hip towards the floor. Push the right forearm into the leg and twist. Push the foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot. And then come back up. Straighten your legs out. Bend your right leg. Draw your heel just in front of your hip. Feet can be about a fist distance from your inner thigh. Take your right hand behind you. Lift your left arm up, get length. Then either hook the hand just outside to twist or you can hook the elbow to twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. On your inhale, find length. And with that extra length, see if you can deepen the twist. Inhale, look forward, unwind. And we'll switch sides. Bringing the left heel in right in front of the left hip. About a fist, dis fist distance between the inner thigh. Place your left hand behind you. Bring your torso upright. Reach the right arm up, find length. Either bring the hand outside and twist or hook the elbow and twist. Notice when you hook the elbow, it causes the back to round, which makes it difficult to twist. So you've got to work extra hard to lift the chest and to twist. Try not to let the right hip move forward. Keep the hips rooted where they are as you twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. Again, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. With each breath, use that breath as a tool to help you deepen your twist. And inhale, look forward, unwind. Straighten your legs out onto your mat. Press your legs down, reach your arms forward, and slowly lower yourself down. Keep the legs pushing down, and try to use your spine like a string of beads, and bring each individual vertebra as a bead down on its own. Once you're on your back, laying down, bend the knees. Satu Bandha Sarangasana, bridge pose. Heels move slightly in front of hips, feet hip width apart. Point your fingertips up, press your elbows down, lift your chest up. Lift your chin slightly. On your inhale, press your feet down, lift your hips up. Bring the arms down, either grab the edges of your mat and pull them away or interlace the hands underneath you. Rolling the shoulders up and under, up and under. Press the arms down to help lift the chest up. Again, lift the chin slightly. Try not to clamp the chin down or overwork the neck. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. To keep the knees outer hip width apart. Keep your hands in our lace and slowly lower your hips down onto your hands. You can stay here with the legs straight, I mean bent, or straighten the legs. 
It might be intense on the hands or the wrists. And see if you can use your breath to relax into it. Keep lifting the chest. Then bend the knees, bring the feet back down to the floor. Lift the hips up. Hold here for three deep breaths. And release the hands. Point the fingertips out. Keep the chest lifted, but lower the hips back down. Release the elbows out beside you and lower down. Take your arms out like goal posts. So they're out at a 90 degree angle. Lift the legs up. Shift the hips a few inches to the left. And then bring the knees over to the right, reaching them towards your elbows. Jatari Parivartanasana. Firmly rotated pose. Try and reach your left shoulder to the floor. Try and bring your left ribs closer to the floor. And bring the knees back up. Shift the hips a few inches over to the right. And bring the knees over to the left, squeezing the knees together. Push the shoulder down. So keep the right shoulder reaching down, right ribs down towards your mat. And then inhale, come back up. Bring the feet down, get the hips back aligned to the torso and the arms beside you. Grab onto the left ankle with your hand. You're gonna roll onto your right hip and now bring the top of your left foot and maybe your left shin down to your mat. So right now it looks like one-legged hero pose. If the top of the shin is resting down or reaching down and there's no discomfort in the knee, lift the hips up and get them squared. Set them back down. Left heel is just outside of left hip. Either stay here or hug the knee in towards the chest. Stay here or draw the knee out to the side. Bring the leg back up to center. Roll back onto your right hip, holding onto the top of the left foot. Gently unwind that leg and bring the foot back down to the floor. We'll switch sides, grabbing hold of the top of the right foot. Lean over onto your left hip and swing the top of the foot, the shin down to your mat. Either stay here if this is intense, work here. If it's okay, bring the knee back up. If it still feels like everything is okay for you, lift the hips up and get them squared back down to your mat. You can stay here with the leg bent or hug the knee in. The, uh, the aim of practice is to work in your stage, in your place, in your body. So do what's right. Our lives have changed a lot in the last few weeks. Your practice also may have changed a lot in the last few weeks. This practice is not something you have to make your body fit. This practice will fit over your body in its current place. Option to drop the knee out to the side. Bring the knee back up to center. 
You'll roll back onto your left hip, undo your right leg. From here, we're gonna move into Tibetan weaponry three. Take your right leg up, grab a hold of the outer edge of your foot with your left hand. Don't worry about straightening the leg. Straighten your left leg down and lean over to your left side. So option one, work here, reaching both arms out like a T, maybe working the right leg towards straight. If you wanna go for the pose, bend the bottom leg, reach around, grab the top of the foot with the hand, and now stretch both legs away from each other, bringing your right shoulder to the floor. Lift your chin up, point it up directly up to the ceiling. Try and create the big gap between your right leg and left leg. Reach your outer right hip towards the front edge of your mat. In other words, reach it away from you, from your head. Then release your bottom foot. Take your arms back out like a T. Inhale, bring your leg back up to center and place it down. Move to the other side. Option to use a strap on any of these poses. Reach around, grab onto the outer edge of your left foot with your right hand. You don't have to have the legs straight in this one. Reach the leg out over to the, the right. For me, that means I have to move over. You can stay here working this or bend the bottom leg. Reach around, grab the top of the foot with the hand. Try to reach your left shoulder to the floor. Create a big gap between your right and left leg. And now reach your right hip towards, away from you, away from your head, away from your torso, towards the front edge of your mat. Try not to clamp your chin down, but keep the neck relaxed. and release your bottom leg. Take your arms out like a T, bring the leg back up to center. Release the leg down. Bring the knees into the chest. Let the low back round, gently rock side to side. Then lift your feet up. Take your hands to the outer edges of your feet for happy baby, letting the knees come down. And gently rock side to side. And re release your feet, bring the soles of the feet together and touch them down to your mat and recline Baddha Konasana pose, bound angle pose. Take a few deep breaths here. And bring your hands to your outer knees, send them in. Bring the knees back into the chest, grab the outer edges of the feet, and now reach the feet over the head. So you can stay here, knees bent, or roll more to the upper back neck, quick plow pose. Upper back is still down, reaching the feet away from you. And then slowly roll your spine down. Bring your heels down to your mat for Shavasana. Take your feet mat width apart, letting the toes fall open and wide. Turn the palms up, lift, press the head down, lift the shoulders up and tuck the shoulder blades underneath you. You can let your eyes close or simply soften your gaze. Let your breath go. Relax your fingers, your toes. Relax your face, your jaw, 
your lips, your tongue, and soften your skin. If your mind tends to wander in Shavasana, think inhale as you inhale and exhale as you exhale.
without moving your body, begin to deepen your breath. Feel your chest, your ribs, your belly rise. Exhale, feel them fall. Take your next deep breath in and feel it reach all the way down to your toes and to your fingertips. Replacing the heaviness of Shavasana, the lightness of your breath. Gently move your fingers and toes. Options to reach your arms over your head for one final stretch. Bend your knees, place your feet onto your mat. Roll over to your right side, resting your head on your right arm. Bring your knees into your chest. Roll a little bit more to your right side. And then press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Option to keep your eyes closed if you like. Bring your palms back to the center of your chest and lift your chest towards your thumb. Cupping your hands slightly as a symbol to receive from your practice. To take all the gifts you get from this practice. Gratitude for ourselves, each other, this community, our world. Namaste. Namaste.